Hi everyone, Angela here from The Money Messenger. Welcome to today's video. Today I want to have a frank conversation with you about whether you'll be homeless in the future or not. I'm hoping to yank at a few emotional heartstrings today because what I want to talk about is actually a very serious topic and which one that a lot of people don't really think about, um, especially with today's changing environment with it comes to investing. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Angela. I've been working in financial planning for the last 20 years. I help people, I write up financial plans for other financial advisors, which help people to repay debt, um, get more out of their cash flow, invest for their future, and just to how to get more out of their money, how to get more bang for their buck. So today I wanna to talk to you about whether you'll be homeless in retirement. I'm going to talk to you today about a situation that came across my desk because actually a close person that I know in my personal life was nearing retirement and she didn't own a home yet. So she was nearing retirement and she had about $80,000 in super. She had an investment property with a loan attached, but no home of her own paid off. So this video today goes out to everyone. young old, nearing retirement, nowhere near retirement, people that are already investors, people that have never invested, people that have their own home, that they're paying off a mortgage, everyone. This is a serious subject and you need to consider it. So with regards to the friend that I just mentioned, her scenario was she was nearing age 65, she had about $80,000 in superannuation and a mortgage attached to an investment loan that I told you about. She hadn't been paying off this investment loan because it's an investment loan. Usually you don't pay it off. You would pay off bad debt, such as a home loan or a car loan first. The thing with my friend is that nearing 65, she was ready to retire thinking she was gonna receive some age pension benefits here in Australia. And she had a little bit in her super that she thought she could top up her pension and she would go about in retirement. Problem is she had nowhere to live in retirement. And this is a real problem. One that even personally hadn't dawned on me until recently, because let's face it, I'm in my mid thirties, I'm an investor myself, I think I've got plenty of time to go until re retirement. But actually we don't have that long, everyone. And if you don't have a home paid off by retirement, doesn't matter about your superannuation or your pension income, you're gonna have nowhere to live. So let's talk about this a little bit more. What happens in retirement is you've worked all your life, you've earned your money. You retire in Australia around the age of 65, 67, depending on your age group. That's when some people get the age pension as well, which is a government pension paid to pensioners. That age pension is being a bit strained because you know a lot of baby boomers are all retiring at the same time now and it's putting pressure on the government. So there's a fear that younger people like myself, once I get to 67, the age pension may not be around, or if it is, it might be a lot less. So let's explore this a little bit more. If you don't have a home paid off, by the time you retire, let's just say 65 for now, you may find yourself homeless. That's because once your income stops, how are you gonna to afford to pay rent? Let's look at this a bit further. In Australia currently, the age pension pays a maximum amount of $454 if you're a single person a week. If you're part of a couple, it pays $684 per week. Now, if you're a renter and you rent where you live, think about how much rent you currently pay. In Australia, you know, it really varies depending on where you're living and the type of property. But let's just say a modest rental payment of $300 a week, if you're a single person paying rent at $300 a week and you receive an age pension, the maximum age pension of $454 per week, that doesn't leave a lot of money for your groceries, your food, your clothing, your utilities, things like that after you pay off your rent. In Australia, most people contribute to superannuation and that's a retirement savings plan. And that's because we have to, the government makes us, but also it's actually a really good tax effective investment. And the idea is that we self-support ourselves to put less burden on the government when it comes to age pension. But the thing with superannuation is 
most people don't have a lot in superannuation in Australia. And by the time they get to 67, they really don't have a lot. See, the mean average balance of a person superannuation by age 65 a couple of years ago was around $300,000 for a man and about just under $200,000 for a woman. That's not enough to retire, especially if you don't have a home paid off. See, the actual truth of the matter is though, most people, they won't even have that much in super by the time they retire. Most people average balances of around $150,000. It's not enough. See, with my friend who had about $80,000 in super, she was paying $300 a week rent. She thought she'd retire, get the age pension of $450 per week and pay her rent, no problems. But that didn't then leave a lot of money for her groceries and whatnot afterwards. See, the thing with all these calculators online that tell you how much you need to retire and how much superannuation you're meant to have, all those figures are based on you owning your own home outright, which means a property with no loan attached. So all those calculators that show that a lot of people want to retire on income of, say, 30000 40000 50000 a year and the amount of superannuation you should save accordingly, that's all based on you having your home paid off. So if you've been a renter for your entire life and you get to retirement and you've managed to save even $150,000 into super, let's just say, maybe more, maybe less, if you then don't have a place to live, you're not going to be worried about how much income you can generate because that's going to be the least of your concerns. See, if you have $150,000 saved in super by retirement, that might be enough to top up your age pension. But where are you going to live? You have some certain scenarios that can play out when you're coming up to retirement. Number one is you rely solely on the age pension for income. But you've got to make sure that you've got a home paid off for you to live in. Then that age pension, it's not very much, it's a very, very modest lifestyle, but it should be enough at least to cover some basics, some clothing, food, utilities, perhaps not a lot of travel opportunities in retirement, but it'll cover the bare essentials. That's what it's there for. It's a safety net for people that don't have enough for retirement. You may retire getting the age pension plus a little bit of super, but if you need to cash out that super to pay for a home, you're going to be left with really minimal income. Then there are some people who manage to save enough super so that by the time they get to retirement, they can buy a home and that's great too. But it really, it doesn't reflect in the figures that we see of the average superannuation balance. So even people like younger people like myself, once they get to retirement, in theory, I should have more money in super because superannuation has been around for a lot longer and contributions have been made in my working lifetime than compared to my friend who's turning 65 now. She only had minimal superannuation. So there was no way that she was gonna be able to have enough money for retirement. She could move into her investment property, but there's a big loan attached to that still. It hadn't been paid down because as a single person, she wasn't able to afford her own rent where she lived, plus also to pay down a mortgage. So you can find yourself in a sticky situation. The reason I wanted to do this video today is because the investment climate seems to be changing with people not buying a home as quickly or as early as perhaps they used to back in the day. And that's for a number of reasons. Some people, millennials especially, and I'm a millennial, so a lot of them think it's uh, too expensive to buy a property. So they postpone it. They think it'll never happen. Other things are getting in the way, whether it's by choice or not by choice. It could be student loans that are huge and, and taking a big chunk of their money once they start working. It could be that they've got the tra a travel bug and they refuse to settle down into one spot for whatever reason. Some people just defer buying a home. They will later. They've got time. They will do it later, later, later. But later is actually ticking past very fast. Some people have bought a home, but unfortunately due to changes in their personal situation, uh, divorce, bankruptcy, things change. And you could find yourself, like my friend actually, who got partway through her life and had a huge financial change to her situation 
for the negative. She basically had to start all over again. And there can be a lot of people that experience divorce and find they come out with nothing and need to start all over again. Or people that have invested and perhaps it didn't go so well and they need to start from scratch. Also, I see couples who are nearing in their 50s and 60s who perhaps bought a home loan, bought a home too late in life. In other words, they didn't leave enough time to repay the mortgage. It's never too late to start, but if you don't allow yourself enough time to save up a deposit, buy a home, repay that loan, you could find yourself in a bit of a predicament once you get to retirement. And there's those people out there who have just spent too much on a home. They have a huge whopping great big mortgage and for whatever reason they can't repay the loan in time by retirement or perhaps they've had changes to their situation like a, a wife stopping work to stay at home with the kids for example and losing a few years worth of income. So this video goes out to everybody. Be warned because this isn't, didn't even dawn on me for a little while being in my mid-30s thinking I had forever but even I'm now starting to think should I be cashing out some investment properties, selling down some debt? I still have a lot of debt myself. It's all investment debt. I have no bad debt, but where am I going to live in retirement? Maybe I should be buying a home for myself. There's many ways to go around this. You can choose. You don't have to buy a property to invest in straight away, but property can just be one of the most guaranteed ways to know you have a home in retirement so long as you pay down the debt. You could choose to invest in businesses or direct shares or other avenues and financial instruments. But, you know, if you get swayed and you get 10 years into your journey and you haven't quite achieved the gains that you were hoping to, you may find yourself a little bit behind the eight ball when it comes to a mortgage. So your steps today is to think about what's going to happen in the next 30 years. Because if you're already 30 now, for example, and you don't have a home that you're paying off, an average home loan is 25 years, 30 years. So you're just leaving enough time for you to be able to do that, buy a home and pay it off. If you're in your 40s now and you don't have a home that you're regularly repaying the mortgage for, then take note, this will need some urgency. And if you're in your 20s, start now, buy a house. Start paying it off. It doesn't have to be a home that you live in straight away. It can be an investment property. Just something that you can sink your teeth into for retirement, which will come sooner or later. It may feel like a long time away, but it also felt like a long time away for my friend who didn't quite get to paying off a home by the time she retired. So where will she live? Where will you live in retirement? Where will I live in retirement? Your steps today. Buy a property as soon as possible. Home, investment, doesn't matter. Buy 10 of them if you want, but just start at one. Buy a property, just a modest property that you can afford. Number two, pay it off as soon as possible. Make extra payments, do what you need to do, even if you don't and it takes you 25, 30 years to repay your loan, so be it. But just make sure you've got a home which you can always sell, upgrade, change later, but at least you've got one place that you can call home in retirement. And number three, your step is to save as much as you can in superannuation. Your employer in Australia puts away 9.5% of your salary. You should try and top that up to at least 15% of your salary. And for that, you actually get a tax deduction. So it is a tax effective investment. And after age 60, you can change, you can convert the super into a pension and actually get tax free income. So it is actually a really good investment. But you want to be aiming for a total of about 15% of your salary going into super over time. So just remember, put much as you can into super. On average, aim to have about $350,000 in your super by the time you get to 65. Now, $350,000 isn't the magic number for everyone. And there's a lot of calculators out there that you can check for yourself, depending if you're a female, a male, when you want to retire, what sort of income you want in retirement, that will tell you how much super you need. Whether you'll get the age pension or not, that of course assumes you've got a home paid off. But by $350,000 as your aim, it's a good middle of the road, possible, doable and believable balance that you can achieve. There will be calculators out there that tell you you need five, six $600,000 and you probably do. 
but for most people that's just not believable or or possible in their eyes so aim for three hundred fifty thousand dollars it's a good start and you will find yourself living an above modest lifestyle in retirement but remember none of this matters if you don't have a home loan that's paid off by retirement so don't be homeless in retirement think about it Regardless of your age now, retirement will creep up on you before you know it. And it does take time to repay a home. Thanks for joining me everyone today. I hope you enjoyed that video. It's a little bit of a confronting situation or a topic actually. And honestly, it's one that a lot of people don't, don't think about. Whenever I see financial plans come across my desk, people that are in their 50s or 60s that are planning retirement, most of them have their home paid off. It's what you did back then. These days things are changing. A lot of people aren't buying homes as quickly as they should be or if at all. Some people are renting their whole entire life and then they get to retirement and they have a rude shock. Some people think they're going to re rely on the government and you know there is a thing in Australia that can help people when they're homeless or needing a home but the waiting list is huge. The locations may not be ideal. The type of property may not be ideal. Are you really going to rely on the government? Or will you be homeless in retirement? If you've got any questions about this topic, please feel free to chime in and say hello on this video. I'm trying to impart some of my knowledge on money matters. So if you've got any questions or ideas for future topics that you want to hear about, please send me a message, send me a comment. And for the rest of you out there, I will see you all next week for our next video. Bye everyone.